The relationship between Neanderthals and modern humans has fascinated researchers since the discovery of primitive human remains in the Neander Valley of Germany over 150 years ago. Neanderthals, who lived in Europe and Western Asia, share a common ancestor with modern humans and are believed to have coexisted with our species for several millennia. But our exact relationship with them has remained shrouded in mystery until now. Now, modeling of these genetic exchanges suggests that most of the Neanderthal ancestry in modern humans comes from male Homo sapiens mating with female Neanderthals. This is supported by the distribution of Neanderthal-derived alleles across various populations, and the evidence comes from several sources. Some researchers argue that the social structures of early human populations may have favored male migration. This could lead to scenarios where Homo sapiens males would seek mates in Neanderthal populations. In fact, the pattern of Neanderthal genetic contribution is consistent with Homo sapiens men mating with Neanderthal women, as Neanderthal DNA tends to be more pronounced in the maternal lineage of modern humans. Nevertheless, there may also have been conflict among the two populations, but such scenarios are speculative. 40,000 years ago, in the dimming light of a cold grey sky, the valley stood quiet, its silence punctuated only by the whisper of the wind through ancient trees. This was the Neander Valley, where a most primal tribe still clung to existence. Their bodies were stout, their foreheads low, their faces jutting forward in a visage of savage strength. They were the last of their kind, Neanderthals, an ancient people, but a people doomed to oblivion. The time had come for the earth to purge itself of these relics, for their crude existence was a remnant of ages long past, incompatible with the destiny of modern man. Taller and with foreheads that spoke to a growing intelligence, these modern humans saw the Neanderthals not as kin, but as savage beasts, a breed unfit for the future. Their bones, heavy and strong, betrayed a brutish nature, incapable of true speech, of artistry, or even the simplest forms of worship. And so, the Neanderthals must be extinguished, swept from the land like dust, to make way for the ascent of modern man. And on this night, under the cover of darkness, the modern humans would rain destruction from the sky. Their flaming arrows were prepared, their tips wrapped in cloth soaked in the fat of wild animals. They purged the valley of its savagery, as was their right, for they were the future. The valley, now devoid of the Neanderthals, was theirs to claim, to settle, and to shape. The world was changing, and the modern human would be its new masters. The old ways, the brutish and the primitive, were gone, swept away by the fire and the arrow. The future belonged to them alone. The savage race has no place in the world that was to come, and in the chaos that followed, Neanderthal villages were pillaged and plundered. And so, the world was made anew, as modern man, the true inheritors of the earth, looked forward to a future where the crude, brutish forms of the Neanderthals would be nothing but a memory, a curiosity for those who would one day dig beneath the soil long after the world had forgotten them. The modern humans left the valley that night, leaving behind only the stillness of death, and the certainty that their kind, with its greater mind and finer frame, was destined to shape the earth. The Neanderthals of this valley were gone, their race extinguished not by nature, but by the hand of man. Nevertheless, with advances in genetic technology, it has become evident that modern humans carry a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA, the result of interbreeding events that occurred tens of thousands of years ago. This video examines the evidence of Neanderthal genes in modern humans that may influence testosterone production, athletic performance, and mating success, highlighting the implications for our understanding of human biology and evolution. For example, Neanderthal variants in genes like ACTN3, which is linked to muscle fiber composition, can influence an individual's strength and sprinting ability. Individuals with the R allele of this gene tend to have a greater proportion of fast twitch muscle fibers, advantageous for power sports. The ACTN3 gene, located on chromosome 11, encodes for a protein which is primarily expressed in fast twitch muscle fibers. 
These muscle fibers are essential for generating rapid and powerful muscle contractions, making them crucial for athletic activities that require explosive strength and speed, such as sprinting, weightlifting, and jumping. Neanderthals, like modern humans, possessed genetic variants in the ACTN3 gene, which plays a critical role in muscle function and athletic performance. Neanderthals are believed to have carried both the R, functional, and X, non-functional alleles of the ACTN3 gene. Genetic studies suggest that Neanderthals had a similar distribution of these alleles as seen in modern human populations. The R allele produces the functional alpha-actinin-3 protein, which is abundant in fast-twitch muscle fibers, essential for explosive strength and power activities. The X allele results in a lack of functional protein, leading to a higher proportion of slow-twitch fibers, which are more suited for endurance activities. When early modern humans interbred with Neanderthals, they inherited some of these ACTN3 variants. Research indicates that the presence of the R allele is linked to enhanced athletic performance in activities requiring strength and speed. Studies suggest that individuals with the R allele, whether from Neanderthal or modern ancestry, may excel in power and sprinting activities. Conversely, those with the X allele may perform better in endurance sports. The ACTN3 gene variants from Neanderthals contribute to the genetic diversity found in modern human populations. Understanding these variants enhances our knowledge of muscle function and athletic potential, illustrating the lasting impact of our ancient relatives on contemporary human performance. Several studies have also highlighted the fact that Neanderthals possessed high levels of hormones, including testosterone and androgens. They may have passed those genes on to modern humans. Recent research has focused on how specific Neanderthal gene variants may affect testosterone production in modern humans. The AR gene, which encodes the androgen receptor, is crucial for the action of testosterone. Variants of this gene can influence the sensitivity of tissues to androgens, thereby affecting testosterone's physiological effects. Studies suggest that some modern human populations carry Neanderthal-derived variants of the AR gene, potentially leading to enhanced androgen sensitivity and increased testosterone effects in certain tissues. Furthermore, another study indicated that several genes related to steroid hormone biosynthesis and signaling pathways show evidence of Neanderthal ancestry. These genes may modulate testosterone synthesis and regulation, thus playing a role in overall health and reproductive capabilities. The study demonstrated that genes involved in endocrine functions, including those regulating hormone synthesis and signaling pathways, show variations that can be traced back to Neanderthal ancestry. The idea that Neanderthals may have had a unique hormonal condition compared to modern humans stems from various genetic, environmental and evolutionary factors that shape their biology in ways that differ from modern humans. Here are key reasons why Neanderthals might have had a hormonal profile that was unparalleled in modern humans. Neanderthals lived in extremely harsh environments during the Ice Age, which likely shaped their hormonal responses to stress, cold and physical exertion. They would have needed higher levels of certain hormones, such as cortisol, the stress hormone, and adrenaline, to cope with the physical and environmental stresses of their surroundings. The combination of environmental pressures, including food scarcity and the need for intense physical activity, hunting large prey, may have required enhanced hormonal responses to stress and energy metabolism that differ from those in modern humans, who evolved in a variety of more temperate climates. Neanderthals had genetic variations in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which regulates hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. These variations may have caused Neanderthals to have different stress responses and a unique metabolic regulation compared to modern humans. These differences could result in a hormonal profile that made them more resilient to physical stress, but also potentially more prone to certain health conditions. Modern humans who have inherited some Neanderthal DNA, particularly in genes involved in immune responses and stress regulation, have been shown to exhibit variations in how their bodies respond to stress or handle certain autoimmune conditions.
This suggests that Neanderthals' hormonal regulation systems may have been optimized for survival in extreme conditions, but at the cost of other health vulnerabilities. Neanderthals are believed to have had higher levels of testosterone compared to modern humans. This would explain their more robust, muscular physiques, including the broad shoulders, thicker bones, and strong grip. Elevated testosterone levels might have contributed to their physical strength and endurance, which were crucial for their survival. Additionally, they may have had higher levels of growth hormone, which would have supported their large muscle mass and bone density. This could also account for their stocky body proportions and rapid physical development compared to modern humans. However, higher testosterone levels may also come with trade-offs, such as increased aggression, reduced immune system flexibility, or even shorter lifespans, all of which could have had evolutionary consequences. Neanderthals likely had a different balance of metabolic hormones to sustain their high-energy demand lifestyle. Given their cold climate and the need to consume large amounts of protein and fat from animal-based diets, their bodies may have regulated insulin, leptin and ghrelin, hormones that control hunger and energy use, differently than modern humans, who evolved in more varied environments with access to diverse food sources. Neanderthals may have had unique hormonal mechanisms related to reproduction. Some research suggests that Neanderthals reached physical maturity faster than modern humans, likely due to differences in their reproductive hormones like testosterone and estrogen. This could have been an evolutionary adaptation to their shorter lifespans and the harsh environments they lived in, where early reproduction would be advantageous. Neanderthals likely had adaptations in their thyroid hormone regulation, which plays a role in metabolism, growth and body temperature regulation. Living in cold climates may have required a unique hormonal balance to maintain body heat and energy, possibly through altered thyroid hormone levels. This would have contributed to their ability to withstand extreme cold and maintain their large muscle mass, despite limited caloric intake during times of food scarcity. Neanderthals likely had a unique hormonal profile driven by genetic, environmental and evolutionary factors. These differences helped them survive in harsh Ice Age environments, develop robust physiques, and cope with high physical demands. However, this unparalleled hormonal condition might have also come with trade-offs, such as heightened stress responses, a predisposition to inflammation, and potentially shorter lifespans. These factors distinguish Neanderthals from modern humans in terms of how their bodies regulated stress, metabolism, immune function, and growth. La Ferrasi from France is one of the most well-preserved Neanderthal skeletons, showing robust skeletal features that suggest higher testosterone levels in males. The male Neanderthals found at La Ferrasi had very robust skeletal structures, including pronounced brow ridges, large jaws, and strong muscle attachments on the bones, suggesting higher levels of testosterone during their development. These traits are often associated with increased testosterone, particularly during adolescence and early adulthood. The study of testosterone levels in the La Ferrasi Neanderthal focuses on inferences made from skeletal remains, as it is not possible to measure hormone levels directly from fossilized bones. Researchers analyze physical traits influenced by testosterone, such as robust cranial features, pronounced brow ridges, large jaws, and strong muscle attachments on bones. These characteristics suggest higher testosterone levels in Neanderthal males compared to modern humans. La Ferrasi I, a male Neanderthal, exhibited signs of a healed skull fracture. The injury would have likely caused trauma but had healed before death, indicating the individual's survival and recovery from a significant head wound. The fact that this Neanderthal survived such an injury is evidence of the species' resilience and potential group care. Neanderthal males, including those from La Ferrasi, show greater sexual dimorphism, where males are notably more robust than females. Testosterone is a key driver of these traits. The strong development of muscle attachment points on the bones indicates high muscle mass, another feature that is influenced by elevated testosterone levels. The La Ferrasi Neanderthal skeleton helps anthropologists understand how testosterone might have contributed to physical robustness and sexual dimorphism in Neanderthal populations, 
as well as their adaptations to demanding environments. Additionally, analyses of autosomal DNA have revealed segments that appear to be under selection pressure, which may be linked to adaptive traits influenced by these ancient lineages. One of the most compelling identification of specific gene variants associated with hormonal pathways. For example, regions of the genome related to steroidogenesis, which governs the synthesis of hormones like testosterone, may exhibit unique variants inherited from archaic species. Variants inherited from archaic species may enhance testosterone sensitivity or production. For instance, genetic studies suggest that certain alleles associated with increased testosterone levels are more prevalent in some populations compared to other populations. These genetic variants might provide an evolutionary advantage in ancestral environments where reproductive success was crucial for survival. Testosterone is known for its role in promoting muscle protein synthesis, leading to greater muscle mass and strength. This increase in muscle size and strength improves physical resilience by allowing individuals to withstand physically demanding tasks, such as lifting, hunting, or defending themselves. Stronger muscles also provide better protection for bones and joints during impacts, reducing the risk of severe injury. Testosterone enhances the body's ability to repair tissues by promoting the growth of new cells and the regeneration of damaged tissues. It has been shown to stimulate collagen production, which is vital for wound healing and the repair of skin, tendons, ligaments and bones. Elevated testosterone levels accelerate the healing process after injuries, allowing individuals to recover faster from wounds, fractures or muscle tears. Additionally, elevated testosterone is linked to a reduced stress response, helping individuals maintain physical and psychological resilience in harsh environments. By modulating the body's response to stress, Testosterone enables individuals to withstand physical and emotional stresses without becoming overwhelmed, which is critical for survival in dangerous or unpredictable environments. This effect is supported by findings that testosterone can improve the recovery rate in both soft tissue injuries and bone fractures by facilitating the repair and regrowth of injured tissues. Faster recovery would have been advantageous for survival in environments where continuous physical activity was necessary for obtaining food and safety. Neanderthal males exhibited greater sexual dimorphism than modern humans, with males showing more pronounced robusticity. Testosterone is known to drive many of these characteristics, such as larger body size, more prominent facial features and denser bones. Inferences suggest that Neanderthal males had relatively higher testosterone levels compared to modern human males, which contributed to these pronounced physical traits. While we cannot directly measure the testosterone levels of these Neanderthal populations, the robust skeletal features observed in remains from La Ferrasi are consistent with high testosterone levels. These findings help anthropologists hypothesize that Neanderthal males in particular may have had higher testosterone levels, contributing to their physical adaptation to harsh environments and their pronounced skeletal features. Studies of ancient DNA have shown that certain gene variants associated with hormone regulation, including testosterone, were passed down from Neanderthals to modern humans through interbreeding that occurred between these species tens of thousands of years ago. These gene variants may have had adaptive benefits for early humans living in different environments, such as in colder climates where Neanderthals thrived. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you and take care.